Well, as long as U.S. acts rationally and remains a rule of law country, I think the fallout, the implications for uh, bilateral trade and investments should be limited. We've had tensions with our allies, partners in the past. Last year, there were tensions with Germany or Netherlands, but that didn't get in the way of expanding trade, attracting investments. While the headlines may not help in terms of you know, perception, perception that there is tension between Turkey and its allies, clearly we do, you know, it's, it's highly likely that the impact is going to be negligible. Assuming that the U.S. system acts rationally when it comes to its dealings uh, with Hulk Bank and, of course, other issues. We but hope that U.S. ultimately, having tried all the, you know, poor options, they will realize that Turkey has a very strong security case when it comes to Syria. You know, Turkey has 911 kilometers border. Turkey cannot sit on the fence. So we want United States not only in words, but in actions to be consistent and to understand Turkey's concerns and act accordingly. If that happens, tensions will ease. But global investment community is actually quite upbeat on Turkey. I was in London a week, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and today and yesterday and the day before in Davos, we've had numerous interactions with investors. I think generally speaking, investors think that Turkish assets are undervalued. Investors now know that Turkey has been very resilient to shocks. Turkey is one of the world leading growth stories, if not the uh, strongest growth story. Uh, probably last year, among major economies, Turkey had the strongest rate of growth, job creation. Turkey is a country of over 80 million population with an upper middle income uh, category. There aren't that many countries out there around the world. So Turkey is an attractive destination for investments, regardless of occasional tensions with our you know, partners, allies, we do believe that Turkey will remain so and Turkey will continue to attract sizable investments. Just staying on the Halk Bank issue for a moment, though, uh, Mr. Shimshek, some, have, some analysts have said that there is still the possibility that the U.S. may curb the ability of some Turkish banks to use the U.S. dollar as a result of this verdict. Um, are you worried that the U.S. is using the dollar to possibly exert its influence beyond its borders um, and the implications that that has, not just for Turkey, but uh, for the global financial system as a whole? I think the U.S. strength is based on, as a system administrator in this case, it's based on rule of law and a rational, multilateral, rule-based system. If U.S. goes down to a path where it loses it, you know, then I think it's shooting itself in the foot because the rest of the world is not going to sit and just accept this. And, you know, there are alternatives. You know, blockchain technology is developing. But let's put it this way. We still hope that they will act rationally. And therefore, you know, in the past, there has been many global banks from UK, from Netherlands, from Germany, from France, where they've been subject to sanctions or penalties. As long as, you know, it is justifiable, it's rational, then whether it's Turkey or any other country, you know, you could deal with it and, you know, move on. But if it is political, clearly in the long run, uh, that, is, that would be a source of concern uh, because uh, the way the world is going right now, uh, you know, it's not, we're not in 50s, 60s, and even 80s, 90s. I think the world is changing. There's a profound geopolitical shift uh, not also in terms of economy and power, in every single sense. 
So the U.S. has to act rationally right. here. Um, Hulk, Bank's, Hulk Bank itself is a listed company. I can't really comment on the case. Uh, they do inform the markets. Uh, so I'm speaking in general terms here. Sure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shimshek, you mentioned blockchain technology there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, is that something that the Turkish government is considering uh, adopting at an institutional level? I think inevitably the world is moving uh, to a new era. Not only blockchain, but there are lots of alternative technologies Every country probably will come up with a digital currency. Every country will probably move from traditional way of doing business to making use of these advanced technologies. So yes, I mean, I think ultimately we all are working on how our systems can, can use and thrive, how we can benefit from technology to improve productivity. It was just, you know, a point to make that the rest of the world clearly is moving and that U.S., if they want to remain as one of the key players in a rule-based world order, that they have to you know, go by rules, live by rules, and be rational here. Um, one very fi quick final question on the Halk Bank issue before we move on. You said this week uh, in Davos that the uh, that Halk Bank is working with the U.S. Treasury and Justice Department in this case. Is there anything more that you can tell us specifically about that? No, I mean I think Halk Bank has been communicating, has been you know uh, communicating this to the market. Halk Bank has been cooperating. That's normal. Halk Bank will make its case. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say. I think it's a listed company, so it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment further. Sure. You've also said this week in Davos that the Turkish government will continue to, and I quote, assertively continue to carry out economic reforms. Uh, Prime Minister Bin Ali Yildirim last year outlined a number of structural reforms uh, on the 11th development plan. What more can you tell us about the specific measures that the government is planning uh, in 2018 and going forwards? Well, last couple of years, despite multiple shocks and geopolitical drag, Turkey continued to make progress on structural reforms. This year, we have a good window of opportunity of a few months before the election cycle kicks in, where we hope that we'll make big push as far as reforms are concerned. First of all, within a week or two, we're hoping to push through a very comprehensive reform package that will help improve ease of doing business in Turkey. We used World Bank report on 190 countries and relatively speaking, see where we could make progress to move Turkey possibly to top 20, 30, you know, best uh, performing countries in terms of ease of doing business. So that's the first chunk of reform. Secondly, we've been working on a number of tax reforms and they are in the pipeline. We do hope that we'll make progress in the first half of this year. Thirdly, last year there was a lot of progress in terms of speeding up justice and also quality of judicial system. This year there's going to be further effort on that front. Labor market reform, last couple of years we did quite a bit. Now we are focusing on how to eliminate restrictions or make it easier for part-time employment because we have a very you know, large youth population, but also female labor participation can be boosted if part-time employment opportunities are there. The opportunities are there, but we need to make it easier. So that's labor market reform. We're also working on a number of other areas, such as boosting or enhancing R&D innovation entrepreneurship ecosystem. So crowdfunding uh, legislation was put in place. We are supporting business angels, venture capital funds. Treasury has just got mandate to put money into funds to support high-tech startups. We're going to restructure Turkish Development Bank because we're trying to strengthen the entrepreneurship ecosystem and boost R&D so that Turkey can move up the value chain. So I can go on and on for an hour, but bottom line is we have a very comprehensive reform program. We're working on second, third generation reforms. And I'm convinced with the help of reforms, 
we can boost Turkey's potential growth and maintain Turkey's strong growth performance. Turkey has been a strong performer. If you look at the last 15 years, average real GDP growth rate has been 5.6%. This is only second to China and India. Those are like countries' continent size. So Turkey is there, Turkey is strong, and I think performance is going to remain strong, but of course structural reforms are needed right. to improve resilience right. to potential shocks down the road, okay. to have obviously room to respond, and I'm convinced that over the next six months there's going to be yeah. further progress. Yes, you're right, the growth figures have been very strong indeed, but inflation is still in double digits. FDIs are about half of what they were about a decade ago. Um, that you have trade and budget deficits. Um, are the stimulus measures that you've outlined to me just now going to be strong enough to counter these trends going forwards? Yes, I think uh, we have a bit of you know inflation problem. Not everything is rosy. We have some rough spots in Turkish economy. We accept that. The the headline inflation has risen largely on the back of lira weakness. And lira weakness has largely been associated with NIF's flow regarding you know, our tension with US and Europe. Relations with European Union are on demand. We're back to some sort of normalcy and relationship is improving both with Germany. We're trying to work out something with, you know, with Netherlands similarly, with Austria. So Turkey is back, Europe is back, we're talking and we're moving on. And I do hope that, you know, ultimately with US also tensions will ease as we go forward. Now, inflation going forward, I think food price committee is working and it's gonna be more effective. Lira has more support because Turkey is now offering a relatively high real interest rates and Turkey is growing. Lira's value has been disconnected with economic fundamentals in terms of growth and convergence. Speaking of fiscal position, last year, Turkey's budget deficit was 1.5% of GDP and general government deficit was 1.8%. Keep in mind that emerging market average deficit is well over 4%. So Turkey has a strong fiscal position. Turkey has a bit of inflation problem, but as I said, that's likely to ease. We, we're likely to see inflation going into a downward trend. Now, as far as external balance is concerned, again, uh, last year we had very strong imports of gold. If you exclude gold and oil, Turkey actually didn't see much deterioration in the current account deficit, despite over 7% real GDP right. growth. So I think the reforms we're doing in terms of moving up the value chain, in terms of improving investment climate, in terms of you know, improving quality of judicial system, quality of education, mm -hmm. all of these are gonna help Turkey become right. more competitive, are gonna help Turkey move up the value chain, okay. and are gonna help Turkey reduce its current account deficit and inflation become a more productive, more innovative economy. Mr. Shimshek, Deputy Prime Minister of Turkey, thank you very much indeed for your time.